Psalms that say, he says, seek justice, seek purpose. And then he said, this can't happen again. Amen, amen. So God is, God is still God. Amen. He still sits on the throne. Yes, yes. Amen. And thank you, Pastor Aaron, for reading that scripture in Habakkuk. Habakkuk had some issues with God. If, I, if we really want to be real, we I mean, had some complaints. You know, and if you're going to complain about anybody, to anybody, should I say, it should be to God, because he can handle your complaints. He can handle our frustration. So if you can pray with me, if you will, from frustration to faith, from frustration to faith, eternal wise and almighty God, the giver of all good and perfect gifts, Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. Lord, we come. We come giving you the glory, the honor, and the praise that you so richly deserve. It's been a long week. It's been a long month. But you are still God. In the midst of everything that's going on, you are still God. So it is in that spirit, Lord God, that I ask that you speak to my heart. Holy Spirit, have your way. In Jesus' name we do pray. Jesus. Amen, amen and amen. amen. From faith, from frustration to faith. Recognizing Hispanic Heritage Month as well, we, 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 we celebrate those of that culture, that race of people that have contributed particular to the word of God. There, there are a lot of men and women of God uh, in the Hispanic community that preach Christ and Him crucified. So I, I celebrate you this month and today. Um, a little bit of background about Habakkuk. Uh, Habakkuk was uh, a prophet in the southern kingdom, uh, Judah. And uh, he actually prophesied this probably a few decades, 20 some years before the Babylonians actually came in and destroyed Jerusalem and deported, of course, the people off into captivity. Um, he kind of was in that same era with Jeremiah, you know, if you will. You know, Jeremiah was also pro you know, prophesying and warning, you know, and you, you, you wonder, you know, how many warnings does people have to have, but we can also ask ourselves that day, how many warnings do we have to have? Amen. So, 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 so Jeremiah, uh, Jeremiah and Habakkuk, uh, they ministered prior to the exile. Uh, he, 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 he had sort of a complaint with God. He, he wrestled with God. So, so a, a, as we see, uh, as Pastor Ann read uh, in, in the first verse, you know, it said the burden of Habakkuk. The prophet did see. He said, verse 2, he said, Oh Lord, how long should I cry? <laughs> thou wilt not hear me, even cry out unto thee of violence, and thou wilt not say. Mm -hmm. You know, he began to doubt the unchanging character of God. Mm -hmm. He was perplexed uh, by the impending destruction uh, of his nation by the Babylonians, and he found his faith, Pastor Aaron, wavering. Like, wait a minute here, you know. And uh, he was questioning God's goodness and, and wisdom, and he called out for God uh, for hope and, and answers. You know, if I could kind of paraphrase, he said, how long must I cry for you? Where are you, God? Are you listening? You know, uh, you know, why do you have me to sit and watch all of this misery? You know, violence is everywhere, Lord. I'm surrounded by people that love to argue and fight. And I'm just kind of paraphrasing what he's saying. Um, and then he said, you know, the Lord, the law is really paralyzed. Mosaic law, you know, they ain't even, even studying that. You know, and he's talking about the children of Israel. And then he said, the wicked outnumber us. You know, how long, Lord? And he was forced to witness this. Yeah, 
Sometimes, sometimes you know, we that strive to do right have to witness all of this stuff and the wickedness, and it was on a continual basis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the situation was so unbearable. You know, he just kept crying out. And, 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 and I, I want you to get this too. This wasn't the first cry. Habakkuk had been crying out to God for a long time, for quite some time. And sometimes when you've been praying for a long time and things seem to get worse, let, let, let's, be, let's make it relevant. How long, Lord, is COVID-19 going to last? How long are the gas prices that will continue to rise and drop? How long is the food prices? You know, you go in and you have $50, $60, and you come out with two bags. How long? How long? Interest rates. You know, people mm -hmm. can't even know. Interest rates is now seven. Seven and a half percent. Pre COVID, it was two, two, two and a half percent. Politicians fight, Democrats, Republicans, Democrats, Republicans. Massive shootings. How long, Lord? How long? Killing the babies. They're going into schools, killing babies. How long, Lord? Hurricane. Floods, fires, how long? And that's how the frustration that Abaka was feeling. So that was Abaka's complaint. That was his first complaint. He had more than one. <laughs> you know, sometimes we have more than one complaint. Then God responds in verse five. God said, uh, yeah. I'm raising up the Babylonians, <laughs> if I can paraphrase. I'm raising up a cruel and violent people that will be used to punish you. Yeah, because you have some wicked leaders in Judah. Kings. You know, if, if you read some of the stuff that happened pre pre exile, you know, you know, this king, and he did what was evil. In the right, in the sight of the Lord, mm -hmm. just like his father. Mm -hmm. So, 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 it, it, you know, it was a continual evilness. So God said, "Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna raise them up. I'm gonna raise up the Babylonians, and and they're going to destroy you. They're gonna destroy the temple, and they're gonna carry you away." Now, and then God gave him an imagery, you know. Not only did I tell you that I was going to raise them up to destroy you, but they're going to be like, they're going to be like horses and, and the horses are going to be swift as leopards and you won't be able to outrun them. Then he told them, you know, there's going to be, it's going to be like wolves, evening wolves with an appetite for killing. Now, when you, you think of wolves, it's one thing. But when you think of evening wolves, if you ever notice, if you ever watch Animal Kingdom, you might see a bunch of, you know, let's just say zebras or something, they're all together. And them wolves will just sit and wait. And then sometimes one of the zebras maybe will get lost. And then as the zebras go on about their way and the sun go down, one got left behind. And they come. They come. And they jump them, jump that one person, or uh, elephant, or whatever. But if you think about the evening, they wait for the perfect timing, the perfect timing to launch and attack. And that's what God gave the energy to uh, Habakkuk. He said, you know, Babylonians is going to be just like that. Then he, then, then he gave him another energy. He said, you know, it's going to be like an eagle swooping down, and there's nowhere to hide. It's just going to swoop down because. When something come out of the sky, it renders you really helpless because really there's nowhere to hide. So, so, so God gave him that imagery. But then what really got me is God told him, God said, your kings and rulers, they're a joke. They really become a joke. Hmm. And they become the object of mockery. 
Y'all have become a joke. The Babylonians are joking. Have the church become a joke. Are we really serious about God, Pastor Henry? Are we a joke? Hmm, hmm. Yeah, these some hard words. But it always get the preacher first. Are we a joke? I'll be one way on Sunday and another way during the week. Can we be effective witnessing and evangelizing? Or are we a joke? Is God a priority? Or do we give him our leftovers? Do we give him our leftovers of our time and our, our talents and our tithes? Hmm. What is our level of an influence in the community as a church, as a universal church? What is our level of influence in our families? Are we still laughing and joking about stuff we don't need to with our family? Hmm. Our dirty jokes, whatever. Are we doing that? And then we wonder why we can't witness to them? Mm. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. This is an ouch, ouch sermon. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll, I'll be one way at work and then another way at church. Can we influence somebody at work? Are we laughing and joking around the water fountain with them? The dirty jokes, the lies, the gossip. Are we a joke? That was God's response to Habakkuk. He reminded Habakkuk that our ways are not his ways. And you know, we like the prophet may ask, is God there? Does he care? It don't seem like he's fair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we, we might struggle with the sovereignty of God despite all the evidence to the contrary. Yes, God was saying, I'm going to allow this to happen. This was his reply to Abaka. Mm -hmm. For my purpose and for my glory. That's what he said. And Habakkuk was a man of honest Doubt. I mean, when you see all of this evil around you, yeah, yeah. And he had to endure these trials and learn to wait on God in the midst of it all. But, but get this, God wanted Habakkuk in the midst of all that chaos to embrace what he had to endure. You know, we, we always say, I'm going through. I'm going to hang on in there. I might be slob if it's not, but I'm gonna hang on in there. But God, God had Habakkuk go a step further. I want you to, and I'm paraphrasing, embrace it. Embrace what I'm going to, what you're going to see and have to endure. Embrace what you're gonna lose. Embrace what you're gonna suffer. Embrace what you have to do without. Embrace people talking about you. Embrace people persecuting you. Embrace it. Embrace it implies effort. Because there are many times we have to embrace his perfect will, even when it hurts. Yeah, yeah. God finished his response to Habakkuk. As we move into further in the scripture, and I'm kind of just kind of walking through this because it, it's so powerful. Mm. Habakkuk, after God gave him that response, Habakkuk was kind of appalled. <laughs> it was just like, God, how can you use a wicked nation to carry out your plans? How can, what? For the prophet, God use of, of, of using Babylon was, was kind of just incompatible with his 
holy nature, Pastor Aaron, or of his essence of who God is. You know, what? So, so, so Habakkuk, he questioned, he questioned why God would permit Babylon to devour the kingdom of Judah. You know, God, you're holy. You know, it should have caused you to, 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 to prevent this. Um, you know, especially, hello, some of us that are remaining faithful to you. Mm. You know, I'm trying to do what's right. Mm. Why? Well, I got to go through. You know, just paraphrasing this. You know, I'm trying to be faithful. So he, he, he complained that God remained idle and silent. You know, you, Lord, say something, do something. And he even, he even uh, gave God his resume. He said, my God, my Holy One, you are eternal. Like God didn't know that. <laughs> you don't tell God who he is. You know, are you going to just sit there and let, us, let them wipe us out? You know, and then, this was a few decades before this happened. The Bible was interceding. I thought you couldn't stand evil. You know, sometimes we try to manipulate stuff. But God's perfect will will be done. And, 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 and part of his protest is that the righteous, including himself, because, you know, he was a righteous prophet, was being punished along with the wicked according to God's plan. Ah. So, yeah, over... What, a million people died of COVID? Mm -hmm. Men and women of God, soldiers on the battlefield. Mm -hmm. God took them home too. Hmm. Yeah. Some were faithful. I remember when it first broke out and it was just, you know, right and left, just death, death, death. And I saw this video of this first lady because they didn't really know that much about COVID at the time. She lost her husband, who was a pastor, and their son. And at the time, because they didn't have a lot of statistics, because that's really what, what, what happens with COVID, let's just be real. Whatever the results are, you know, that's what, okay, well, oh, it seems to be swaying this way, so if you do this, and you take that, and that. But anyway, they didn't have a lot of uh, information so they, be, they wouldn't even let her touch her husband's face in the coffin. And she had on gloves. She said, but I got on gloves, so I'm sorry. He died of COVID. You can't touch him. Can you imagine that? They say you can walk in, but you can't touch him. And I will never forget her faith, her her demeanor, she said, I know that God has a plan for this, and I know that he has a purpose for it. I don't understand it, but I'm just going to hold on. And she was talking to her husband and called I'm going to hold on to this unchanging thing. That was so powerful. Yeah, yeah. So sometimes when we're striving to do what's right, though we're not perfect, we have to suffer along with it the wicked, to accomplish God's perfect plan. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, 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 so Habakkuk, that was his second complaint. You know, you're supposed to be holy. He makes his argument that the Babylonians were, were, were kind of like fishermen. And, and when they cast their net into, sea, into the sea, the, the, then the righteous and everybody, you know, when you cast the net in the sea, the righteous and the evil, everybody get caught in the net. So Habakkuk had a problem with that. You know, he said, you know, why do we that's trying to do right have, this, have, this, have the same fate that the wicked does? You know, he still had a problem. He still had a problem. He had issues. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And he, then starting at verse 2, he finally resolved. And that's that turning point. He finally resolved to say, well, I've made my argument, and I'm just going to sit and wait for God's response. 
verse 2, one says, I stand upon my watch. I mean, chapter 2, verse 1. I stand upon my watch and set me upon a tower, and I will watch to see what he will say unto me and what I should answer when I am reproved. Standing watch. Watchmen were, in that they were kind of stationed um, at the highest point of the city wall to, to kind of see the impending danger. Uh, and, and, and as a watchman, prophets were to communicate that message to the people. So, so standing watch. But this, this really goes a little further than that because it was kind of symbolic when he said it. Watch indicates a pathetic place of responsibility. So as a prophet, as a man, and as a woman of God, sometimes you have to be unaccompanied and, and withdrawn from all the cares of this world and all the craziness and put yourself in a position to hear from God. And, and that's what he says. So I'm going to stand watch. So, so, so in order to get God's revelation, he had to keep himself in a position to hear from God. Just because a man and woman of God is going through with the wicked, that doesn't mean that they abandon their position, their calling. Instead, they, 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 they listen and they hear from God, but they have to keep themselves in a posture. They have to stand watch. They have to be lifted up in the spirit to see the impending warnings. Now, this does not stop the warning and stain from coming. This didn't stop the Babylonian captivity from happening, but he had to maintain that position. He had to stand upon his watch. What does that say to us as men and women of God? Don't abandon your position just because COVID is going on, just because there's high food prices, just because there's massive shootings. Don't abandon your position because if you abandon your position and you're not standing watch, when the response from God comes, you won't even hear it. Because you caught up with the rest of the people. They complain about that. I don't know. These $20 or $30 ain't going to go far. I know what I'm going to do for food. You are a child of the living God. Hallelujah. Just because it's not in your refrigerator doesn't mean that he's not going to feed you. Amen. Now, as, parent, as Pastor Aaron said, well, I think last week, Stop isolating yourself. Get out of fitness. Do his will. And he will feed you. Your plate might not come from your refrigerator. But it will come. He'll feed you. You're not going to stop. But, 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 but what we want is how we want it, when we want it. No, Lord, I, I just want you to fill my refrigerator. I don't want to have to... Uh, Depend on somebody else. And maybe that's what he wants you to do. Just saying. But we're so my, 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 my. I go in my house, I close the door, and that's it. Okay, well, what does God do? Amen. Amen. So, 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 so he, 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 he God, uh, God replies to Habakkuk when Habakkuk resolved to wait and answer. God said, okay, now, now, now I think you can hear me. He said, write the vision. Make it plain upon tablets that he may run that readeth it. Write it down, Habakkuk. Write it down and make it plain. They had clay tablets back in the day. And, and, and a lot of times they would place them in a very public place that those that could come, they could read it. They could read it. So, 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 so he told them to write the vision and make it plain. Now, and then he told them to wait for it. But the point is, the vision might not be all good. The vision is everything. It's the good, the bad, and the ugly. 
Okay, but 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 it, it puts the prophet Habakkuk and the people in a position to be read when they read it. Amen. 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 So 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 I say that to say this would take place maybe twenty some years or two decades, depending on. But during that wait, sometimes when the preacher preaches or when the prophet prophesies, as in Habakkuk's case, and it don't come right away, they kind of revert to what it used to be. Well, you know, he said that three months ago, it ain't happened yet, so, you know. But, 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 but that's why God told him to wait for it. He said, wait for it. He's, in verse 3, he says, for the vision is yet for an appointed time. But at the end, it will speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it. If God said it, that sells it. That's it. It might take decades. But God was telling him to wait. And the Bible was silent. But God told him to wait. Because it will surely come, it will not tarry. And I like verse 4. It says, Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him. That's the wicked. That's the wicked. But he ended, he said, But the just shall live by faith. You have to resolve sometime in your spirit that you will continue to trust God. In the midst of the chaos, because we walk by faith and not by sight. The just, the just that's going through with the wicked people, the just, you know, trying to do what's right, they get COVID too. I had it so bad. God is my witness. I had it so bad, I almost told Aaron, you need to take me to the hospital. They put me on Paxlovid. I think it was for six days. Mm. I had hallucinations, high fever, mm. loss of appetite. Mm. I was horizontal in bed for three days. Mm. Even a walk to the bathroom made me exhausted. Mm. The hallucination, I think, frightened me the most because I have a glimpse when I was seven years old. And then it'll jump back to my current age. And then I have another hallucination where I was a teenager. I mean, it was just back and forth, back and forth all night. So, 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 so I say that, and, and no appetite. I mean, it, it, it was hard. It took me about 40 minutes to eat a banana because I would chew it, sit up and chew, take a bite, lay back down. Chew it, lay back down. Finally got it down. Because what I did know is, I, even though I couldn't smell or taste, I still had to eat. So I say that to say, we're not exempt from suffering. We're not exempt from not having enough money. We're not exempt from bills not being paid. We got to go along with what God's purpose is. We have to go along with what his will is because we have to maintain that light, that hope in the midst of it all. Who else is going to give them hope? We are called to give them hope and we are all ministers. Whether we stand behind the pulpit or not, we are all ministers. Then God gives the woes. He gave five woes that would, what would happen to the Babylonians <laughs> because of their dishonesty and their covetousness and their robbery and embezzlement and adultery. This was the answer to Habakkuk's question. Because he said, God, are you fair to use an evil empire to judge his own people? He said, no, they got, they're not getting away with nothing, but they are serving my purpose right now. So let's not always Says Satan, you know, Satan sure is busy. Now, God might be shaping you up or preparing us for something. And we just have to go with the flow. We just have to go with it. Do you trust him? 
Do you trust him to feed you? Okay. Okay. Well, you know, I'm getting ready to lose my house. Okay. He never, maybe he may have not promised you that you would keep that house, but he'll promise you that you'll have somewhere to stay. And see, that's, that's our problem. Really, that's our problem. We want it our way. We just want it our way. Well, I don't want to stay with nobody. How you know that's not what he wants you to do? We just want it our way. I don't want to ride in the car with nobody. I don't want to be bothered. Mm. Maybe he want to repossess. We want it our way. But then we want to sing, Lord, I'm available to you. My storage is empty. Is it? Because that's what that means. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we sum it up, and I and I like verse um, verse 20, 2.20 says, but the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silent before my Lord, the living God. You know, none of this Babylonian stuff. You know, when you got some stones and clay or wood or whatever they made it out of. God made it perfectly clear to Habakkuk in his final response. But the Lord is in his holy temple. Keep silent before him. So after that, Habakkuk said, you know, I'm just going to break out into a song. It was a prayer, but, but, he, but, but it, it, it's in the form of a song. And sometimes we just have to break out in a song. Yeah, so he broke out in a song. And he sang. And he was encouraged by the vision. He changed his question. Because his initial question was, why does God allow this? But now it's, who is this God who will sustain me in the things that he has allowed? And that's what we have to resolve to. We have to go from you know, from frustration to faith. God is going to allow it and he's going to sustain me. I'm going to get through it. I don't minimize hurt. I don't minimize loss. But I know one thing. He's going to get me through it. Yes. So the doubt was turned into faith. Yes. And Habakkuk accepted the, the approaching now disaster that God was getting ready to impend upon Judah because he knew that God would prevail in the end and that, 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 that's it. So, 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 so by taking a good look at God, he was able to put this captivity into perspective. And sometimes we have to take these hurts and sometimes it hurts. I'm not minimizing that. These losses and these hurts. And sometimes we have to just take it and put it into perspective. Mm -hmm. Put it into God's plan. Put it into his will. Put it into his way. Because if we don't, some hurts will take us out because we own him. We have to resolve to say, okay, this hurts. It hurts so bad. But I got to put it I got to put this captivity into perspective. And then he settled with the hymn of faith. But the song and the hymn came out of uh, a place of pressure, a place of emotional pressure, a, a, a place where, you know, you just, I can't get up, I can't move. It hurts so bad. That's where the song came out of it. And, and, and I think about uh, gospel songs and, 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 and their stories sometimes of how songs come into play. And Habakkuk glanced back at Israel's journey from Egypt to Sinai. He kind of reflected. And then finally, he said, Pastor Aaron, in 317, he says, although the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall fruit be in the vines, the labor of the olive shall fail, 
and the fields shall yield no meat. The flock shall be cut off from the fold, and there shall be no herd in the stalls. 18. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. The Lord is my strength, and he will make my feet like hinds feet. And he will make me to walk upon my high places to the chief singer on my string instruments. Thank you, Lord. He pictured himself as a, as a deer's feet, picking his way through the cracks of trouble, sure-footed, because he had the faith. Trust in God when you don't understand it and the world is wicked, because sometimes his answer will include calamity. Sometimes it will include devastation before he provides the deliverance. From frustration to faith, God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. And may his word remind us that time is running out. We must be about the Lord's business. We must stop playing church. If we stop playing church and get serious, the world won't view us as a joke. As we stand all over the congregation. We, we sometimes, I guess, slack up, for a better word, um, in terms of thinking that those things that we think that we have to do in order to be ready for God. But sometimes in the midst of chaos, sometimes in the midst of de devastation, God is saying, write the vision. Make it plain. Put it on tablets. And those that read will run with it. Write the vision. But God, you just, Lord, you just don't know what I'm going through. Write the vision. What did I show you? Write. Because we have to maintain that position. We have to maintain that position so that we can hear from him. Complain to him, God can take it. He's the only one that can, can take it. Our issue sometimes is we complain to everybody but God. We take that to everybody but God. You know, listen. So Habakkuk got to that point of resolve where he said, I'm just gonna stand watch. Yeah. I'm just gonna stand watch. I'm just going to listen to what you have to say. Because the vision will give you the whole picture. It will give you the good, the bad, and the ugly. But the biggest thing it will give you is this. That you will prevail. Because God will prevail. But sometimes it's not Satan using the wicked to make you uncomfortable. That's the commandment. Defend the often. That's the assignment. So whatever your assignment is, as we stand all over the congregation to my Facebook friends, trust God. Write the vision. Make it funny. He wants us to stay. And respond with the song. Put a song in your heart and stay watching. God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. Amen.